Good morning, Geodians. This is Mike Horton, project creator of the GeoNet Network. And today I'm going to talk about the top five companies in physical AI and five ways that decentralized physical infrastructure networks, Deepin, are going to revolutionize physical AI, accelerate its adoption, and become the world's biggest market for crypto services. So number one is Waymo. Waymo has mastered level four autonomous driving with operational vehicles in Phoenix, San Francisco, and LA, a roadmap to Austin, Miami, and Tokyo, driving over a million miles a week as a fully driverless Uber. These things navigate the city streets using all kinds of sensors, LIDAR, radar, IMU, GNSS, and incredible amounts of training data. An amazing technical accomplishment. Number two is DJI. So DJI is the world's largest manufacturer of drones. They started from humble beginnings in 2006, building autopilots for model helicopters. In 2012, integrated the now famous Phantom drone, which really brought mass market consumers into drone photography. Fast forward to today, these drones are completely capable of autonomous flight. They're programmable via API. They have their own system on a chip technology, radio technology, LIDAR technology, and span vehicles from under 250 grams through vehicles capable of drone delivery and autonomous spring, all at mass production scale. So DJI is a true master of physical AI. Number three is Tesla. So Tesla is the electric vehicle company, um, and they've started on autonomous driving or full self-driving, as they call it, back in 2014. And they've scaled that out to millions of vehicles and done tremendous work on the development of autonomous driving using very cheap consumer sensors, cameras, and basic sensors on a passenger vehicle uh, automotive vehicle. Amazing work. In 2019, they started the development of humanoid robots. Now, with Elon's newfound political power and over 2 million registered vehicles on the road, there's no doubt that Tesla will continue to be a powerhouse in physical AI products and services. Number four is Unitree Robotics. Now, this name may not be familiar to you, but you've probably seen on the internet all these amazing videos of robotic dogs and humanoid robotics doing flips and all this stuff, a lot of it popularized by Boston Dynamics. What Unitree brings to the party is scalability. So their robotic dogs are really capable machines starting at $1,600. They've introduced a robotic humanoid robot at 16 grand, and their groups all over the planet now building the next generation of physical work services using robots on top of the Unitree platform. So watch that space. Number five is NVIDIA. Now, NVIDIA just a couple of days ago was the most powerful company or the most valuable company on the planet. Now, when DeepSeek, uh, this new AI service from China came out, they kind of came down a couple of notches because DeepSeek claims to be doing that on much lesser compute platforms from NVIDIA. At any rate, NVIDIA is a powerhouse. They do control some of the most fundamental aspects of AI, which is a semiconductor technology, and they've scaled that, obviously, at mass volumes. They are a powerhouse in physical AI as well with a couple of key products. One is the Jetson. These are like Raspberry Pis, but they're supercomputers, and they're used on lots of robotic vehicle designs. And they also have their drive stack, which is becoming very uh, popular in autonomous ADAS systems, and uh, Mercedes-Benz, Volvo's adopted that. They made an announcement at CES regarding a partnership between themselves, Aurora, and Continental to scale out self-driving services for trucking. Now, these top five physical AI companies you, are they going to take over the world? Are they going to be the end-all, be-all? No. I think that Deepin is going to really revolutionize physical AI, shake up the space, and help it scale to really mass market uh, deployments. And why is that? There are, f there are some big barriers that centralized entities have in the development of physical AI. And let's talk about those top five things. Number one is cost. We can look at Waymo as an example. So Waymo is operational in three cities. In the last two years since it's uh, spun out of Google, they've raised over $11 billion in capital to scale this business. It's incredibly expensive. And think about all the work they're going to have to do when they take, say, the Waymo vehicles and move them to New Delhi. It's a totally different operational environment. There'll be lots of training and relearning all the things that need a lot of engineering and support, how are they going to scale that? 
Number two is global infrastructure. GeoNet's a great case example. These robots, if they're going to navigate our outdoor environments, they'd like to have precise location services. And those services to date haven't existed globally and been available at low cost. But GeoNet as a deepened network is changing that. We've been able to build a network that's bigger than any network on the planet in, in record time and offer those services available affordably. And this is not true just in hyper-precise location services, but you can also think about communication, energy infrastructure, HD mapping protocols like Rover I'm really excited about. They're actually doing the hard work that these autonomous car companies have been doing to kind of instrument vehicles with LiDAR and do a pre-HD mapping of cities. This can be done by DeepBend. Hive Mapper, Natix, also super important protocols to scaling out these services. Number three is privacy. So these machines, these robots, are data sucking, personally identifiable data sucking machines. And this is a, is a should be a cause for alarm to everybody. Web3, things like ZK, offer really unique solutions to get that data and do it in a privacy preserving way. So I think Web3 offers some really innovative solutions to protect privacy while still enabling these machines to do their thing. Number four is regulatory. And I wanted to use an example of cruise automation's incident in San Francisco. So back in October 23, a cruise vehicle um, kind of ran over essentially a, a passerby and dragged them around. It's a little unclear how the passenger got trapped under the vehicle, but at any rate, it dragged the, the person around and then they went and they covered that up. That eventually came out. The NTSB investigated. They were pressed criminal charges. They ended up um, having to pay a big fine and took a very big black eye, which actually led to the demise of cruise automation in San Francisco. This type of thing, public ledger technology, blockchain technology, offers a way to track transactions that these vehicles do and what actions they're taking. And I think regulators are actually going to demand that as these services scale out into the public uh, into the public wild. Number five is open source. So Web3, blockchain, crypto, big promoter of open source. There's a lot of geopolitical tension right now in the world. I'd particularly highlight my list had three US-based companies, two China-based companies, and they're kind of in a, quote, war on AI. Well, the great thing about open source is it's an anecdote to ge geopolitical tensions, and it accelerates the state of the art in a way that we can still compete, but we're all working from a kind of common sheet of paper advancing the state of the art. So for those five reasons, I think Deepin is going to be a real powerhouse in physical AI. Furthermore, physical AI is addressing the biggest marketplaces on the planet, from automotive to global logistics to aviation to all the things that we spend labor on um, all over the world. Physical AI has the potential to really revolutionize that, but it needs data like no tomorrow. And they say, is an, a, a, good, a good analogy, build products that AI wants to consume. And that's exactly what Steepen's doing. And because these markets are so huge, it's very clear in my mind that Physical AI will drive Deepin to become the biggest category in all of crypto. And I couldn't be more excited about that and to share stories around that. So next week, I'm going to talk to one of the OG GeoNet miners who has actually been using GeoNet in his own personal operations and trying to scale that into an actual business platform. It's a super interesting story. Don't miss it. And I invite you to like and subscribe to my channel and wish you happy mining. GeoNet. Mind the sky.